And, and welcome to another episode of Breakthrough, uh, a Dale Carnegie podcast. And, and just as a reminder for us, it's really about how do we add value to young adults, future leaders, if you like, uh, parents and educators. How do we get parents to lead, learners to, to, to learn, and educators to teach? And it's about giving back to the communities that serve us through everyday leadership and inspiration. I'm, I'm Neville DeLucia, co-hosting alongside my colleague, Faith Wright. And it's an absolute delight for us to have our, our guest on today. Justin Lecouye has got a, a colorful background, certainly wonderful life experience, but as the co-founder of Grow and Give, and their philosophy is to help organizations to be successful so they can give back and support their communities. And, and Justin, you and I got to connect over your um, outreach or your business, right? A subsidiary of, of Grow and Give, which is Lead Baller. And the connection that I made to you was really how you just lit up the meeting, if I'm honest with you, and your um, self-belief in what you do, you know, was, was really vital. And it got me to think about these, these Gen Zs that are leaving the workplace that maybe are flooded and afraid. What, can, what advice can you give them to make them, you know, show up as their best self? So tell us about who you are and maybe answer that question for us, if you would. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for that intro. Uh, honored, honored to be on this, man. I think the feelings were mutual. Our 30 minute conversation could have been eight hours if we didn't, if we didn't wrap it up. So lots of energy uh, and, and passion oozing, oozing from both of us. Um, yeah. Quick background on my side, uh, you know, grew up in, Vir in Virginia, currently in Charlotte, running, running these businesses down here. Um, yeah. You know, I, you know, I'll start a little bit with, uh, you know, had a little bit of a troublesome upbringing, lots of chaos, a lot of inconsistency mm. is what I say, right? From mm. a lack of male figures at times to, to uh, you know, having wild amounts of independence, it's kind of being like 13 years old on and raising myself and doing whatever I want, whenever I want. A very different lifestyle, than especially most people here in the States. Um, so then that led me to, then I went to college, studied healthcare administration, had the, I'm going to be a CEO of a hospital and I'm going to change the whole world, right? I'm going to do what <laughs> God put me on earth to do and just impact every human being I touch. That's been, you know, I, I remember, um, long story short, uh, I was adopted by my aunt and uncle. My aunt meant the world to me. She did pass away when I was 13. That was part of me kind of taking care of myself. And the last thing my aunt told me was Justin, take your gifts for business and your passion for people and put the two together and make an impact. And that's legitimately what she said the night before she passed away and her sleep unexpectedly. And I think about that quote every single day. And that is spot on, spot on that. I like eat, sleep and breathe business. But if it's not fulfilled with purpose and people, then I want no part of it. But if you put mm -hmm. the two together, my gosh, am I on fire? Like you've never seen. And so uh, I just always want to make sure I'm living a life that I can't wait to wake up and I hate to go to bed at night. And that's, that's where I'm at. I'm very thankful for that. Mm -hmm. Um, so then after college, went, worked at a hospital for a little bit, uh, you're going to hear this word LinkedIn come up 8,000 times. It's hard for me to hide. It's a huge part of my life. My, um, uh, co-founder Jimmy actually reached out to me on LinkedIn. He's working at Northwestern Mutual, smile and dial, you know, called me a million times. I've met up with him and we align, right? Uh, a mentor of mine always says no ship sinks faster than a partnership. <laughs> and so when you have a partnership in business, it is wildly important to make sure that there's complete alignment when it comes to ethics, morals, values, vision, everything. And every now and then I feel like the Lord brings someone in your life and you're like, man, we're going to do epic stuff together. And that was Jimmy and I. We got connected to a CEO of a medical company, jumped on board, company had less than 50 employees, went to over 900, was doing over $50 million in only a couple of years, fastest growing company in North Carolina. We we're able to oversee a huge part of North Carolina, help out our sales team, we, we used LinkedIn to close millions and millions of dollars. And in that experience, it was awesome. They allowed us to be what I call entrepreneurs, right? Which is an entrepreneur inside of a company. In a business, yeah. And man, it was just beautiful. They just said, hey, I believe in you guys. You're in your early 20s, sacrifice it all, do whatever it takes, impact the world, call us once a month. That's legitimately what happened. So we came down there, helped build out that company. In that time, a lot of companies found out of the success we had on LinkedIn. And that turned into us coaching companies that then turned into us building out a marketing agency around LinkedIn that then turned into a multi-million dollar marketing agency that we now have here in Charlotte. And again, that kind of was just kind of the Lord being a huge part of our life saying, hey, yeah. you can create a bigger life of abundance and give back more abundantly by doing this. And so that's what had us kind of leave the medical company, build this. And that's what brings us here to today where we did a 
a custom AI video outreach, I think to you and Evelyn, and we jumped on a call connected and within seven minutes, I felt like you were already a client. And so it was a really beautiful relationship. Um, and so hopefully that that helps in the highest level recap. I, I think what it does, it, it does a great, um, I guess, a journey, a, a brief journey. And if I call a four or three or four minute journey, that talks about who you are and it displays, displays your passion. And again, it's about how do we get individuals that are leaving college right now, Gen Zs or leaders that want to lead those people to encourage those individuals to show up as your best self, right? What are some things you might advise for them to, to be able to do that? So Gen Zs pull out a piece of paper and pen. This is probably my favorite question that <laughs> one could ask me. And we did not plan this. So man, I'm going to have to try and not talk for three hours here. So we're going to keep it high and tight. I'll hit you with what I got. First thing first. Uh, I want to start with the fact that Gen Z's have to understand that right now, if they go into the marketplace, we have five generations of human beings working yep. at the same time. You are going to be in a boardroom with an 84-year-old person and, a, and an 18-year-old person fresh out of high school who's running the TikTok. And that 84-year-old person has to understand the value that that 18-year-old person brings because they bring a lot of extra value in different ways that they don't. And that 18-year-old person has to realize uh, that they know nothing at all, that they are still infants in the world, right? Just plain and simple. You know, I, I, I think that uh, sometimes the biggest mistake people make in life is thinking they know everything. And it's really beautiful because you're really smart when you realize you know nothing at all. And it brings a level of humbleness and sincerity and genuineness mm -hmm. to the workplace that I think that everybody wants out of Gen Z's that me as a millennial got crap for all the time, um, <laughs> which is coming in not seeking entitlement, but more so there are a couple of things I would really focus on with the understanding that you are going to be working with people 70 years older than you. And there better be a lot of patience and understanding that they bring pros that you don't bring and you bring pros that they don't bring. And it's got to be healthy on both sides. So one thing is I think Gen Z's have to understand that most people in life survive, right? Like they just wake up and they just exist. There's no intentionality on any part of what happens. Mm. And I remember because I was wired so differently uh, I did mission trips too. I was in the Dominican Republic and did fun stuff there. And uh, I would come back after watching kids use a bathroom in a hole on the ground and a kid would be crying or frustrated because the Starbucks line's too long. And I'm like, well, Johnny, suck it up, buttercup, because other people in other countries would give their arm to have your worst day. Like first and foremost, right? And so first off, realize how blessed you are. <laughs> And then secondly, use that for good and be wildly intentional every day. So mm. I remember sitting there and I was 18 and I, I, I think a lot about my last name and I want my last name to carry weight, right? Like this, this means a lot. And so uh, on my side, it was, what does my last name represent? Like, what do I want to be known for? And I better be living out a life that it doubles down on everything that I want to be known for there. And so if I want to be known for you know, uh, uh, faith is a huge component of my life and I've, I want to take care of myself and fitness is, is a huge priority. And I want to be a, a husband and a father that crushes it even more than a businessman. I want to be like known as the guy who's like a man of faith and an unbelievable husband and father who happens to run an unbelievably successful business and not a successful businessman where everything else self-destructs around him, which is what most mm -hmm. men do the more that I've been around him, which is, it's a little sad, but long story short, I'm just saying on the Gen Z side, just like really doubling down and being intentional on like, what do you stand for and building out your life to where every second you're doing things that represent your name and get you to where you want, or else then you're telling people, I want to achieve this, but your actions are not following. And naturally some will become hypocritical because it's, easy to say who you want to be, hard to back it up. And that'd be my mm. first and, and, and most important thing is who are you? What do you represent? And then build a life in day-to-day -day intentionality around becoming that person. Mm -hmm. uh, that is something that most people don't even do by the time they're 50, 60, 70, because they just existed, which is very different than living with intention. And I think that's you focus. So I'll stop there on number one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Again. That's where I would start. <laughs> I love, love what you're saying, Justin, about intentionality and really that personal responsibility that it that it'll take from young adults to step into their future um, by knowing who they truly are, what they want out of life, that vision that they have for themselves, what they value, all good stuff. Where did that come from for you specifically? Like Neville was talking about that belief 
that you have in yourself. Where did that, is there like a moment that you could say that that really sparked for you or that you really got it? Like, this is who I am and this is what I'm stepping into? Yeah, great, great question. You know, you're going to hear me bring up the word faith numerous times because it's hard for me to like not talk about it. It is, it is a very important part of my life. Um, but I think that, uh, again, in my earlier stages of life, I realized that life, you can look at life in three different ways. And this will answer the question nicely, right? You can look at life as life happens to you. That is how you are born into this world. I am a victim. Life happens to me and I have no control. That's what the world will tell you since the day that you're born. And you got to buy this and you got to do this or else you're an inferior human being. Not true. But life happens to you. Then you have to work so hard on yourself for years and years and years to realize life doesn't happen to you. Uh, then you get to where life happens because of you. I did not get pulled over by that cop or whatever because he's a jerk. I overslept by 13 minutes and I was going 23 miles over the speed limit, right? Like it, it's taking some ownership of life, of a lot mm -hmm. of good and bad. And then you have to work even harder to get to like the one percenters, I believe how they think. One percenters meaning like people are just living a life on fire. Those people that you're just around and you just want to be around them all the time because they're thriving in every part of life. And you're like, what the heck happened? Those people, they look at life as life happens for you. So if I made a book of all the hardships I went through from zero to 18, it'd be 400 chapters, right? Like there's a lot and we all have hard lives. Like there's no one, like I'm never going to be here and be like, oh, mine's so much harder than yours. I have no idea what anyone's been through. I know that it wasn't easy. That's for gosh darn sure. And so um, I just naturally always believe that life happens in your best intention. And so if something horrible happens and it's rough, you might realize in three months, three years or 30 years that it actually brought a ton of good into your life. And so mm -hmm. life happens for you. It helps you get past huge roadblocks in life quicker, but it also makes you just more appreciative, full of gratitude and get through things quicker. So that moment for me was when my aunt passed away when I was 13. I remember kind of looking in the mirror, I was kind of talking to God and I was like, why does this happen? I've been through so much chaos. Like there's finally a little bit of stability and you take away the most important human being in my life. And I felt like I had a choice of I could take the hardships that wired me completely different than anyone else around me. And it could become my superpower. I was comfortable being uncomfortable. I, I studied every human being. Why do they talk the way they talk, walk the way they walk, move the way that they move because of my upbringing. I was kind of in survival mode. I, I did all these things that could be looked at as bad and I could use it for destructive behavior. But I also looked at it as like, there's a lot of good. Made me really good at sales. Made me good at loving people and reading people. Made me hyper entrepreneurial. Uh, made me very, un, very comfortable in wildly uncomfortable situations. And so I just think that was the moment where I made the decision. Life happens for me. And every day I need to be the best version of myself for my future wife my future kids, my future business, whatever happens, I need to be intentional right now for who I need to be in 10 years. So I lost that excitement of playing video games and doing things like that. Nothing wrong with that. But to me, I knew where I wanted to go. I knew the person I wanted to be. I was around a lot of people who were not what I wanted to be, which was a blessing because I knew exactly didn't want to be there. <laughs> that's right. So it's like, oh man, I grew up around people who were overweight, living life of mediocrity. Great. Then you knew you didn't want it and you should have done the opposite. But don't use it as an excuse to, to like repeat the cycle because when you exist, you will repeat whatever environment you grew up in. Yeah, and I think so it's I just went all in on pursuing that. So yeah, yeah. and I, I think it's this excuse thing, right? And um I, I just hearing what you're saying, and I just think about some of the stuff that we that we encourage for our kids. I'm a firm believer that you've got to rest. And it's sometimes when you're resting, you're being your most productive. Now, whether that means giving your brain to the television. That's playing That's PlayStation true. or walking outside or, or having quiet time, whatever that rest is, but we can't rest right. for seven hours in a day. right? And it's part of that accountability. So I'm just hearing you talk about accountability and making an impact and defining what success looks like, because it means different things, different people. So having that, that um, definition of success and, and taking that daily accountability every step of the way, I think is really important. So when, when people, crush our dreams right and i think about some of the exposures i've had i've been very blessed to grow up in a home with a, a strong mom entrepreneurial parents both of them uh, a, a, a wonderful dad loving home you know it's very different to yours is what i'm saying yeah, justin so and so this comes for for us whether we have that or whether we don't right i mean i think it's just how we choose to to work this world what can we do as individuals whether it's parenting leading or whether it's, it's young adults 
to have that resilient mindset and not give up in your experience, you've experienced so much, you know, 13, the, the, with all this weight you're bearing and, and your aunt passes away, your guardian, your, 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 the person that gave you stability, what was it that had you say, well, I can get through this? Yeah, I mean, the first and foremost for me was fair. Like, you know, I, I, I like to always say, um, if you put, uh, if you put like the applause in the hands of your fans, people, right. And, and your self-worth, you are always going to feel worthless. You, you mm. have got to get to the place where your emotions, your feelings, who you think of you are has zero to do with anything outside of you and mm. in the world. Because then if you hit too many red lights, you're flustered for the day and you take it out for people. Mm. If someone's sick, if it's this, like, the world is always going to bring challenges. What a, what, a whole, yeah. what a challenging and frustrating life to live if that's the case. And so this really comes back to like, in my opinion, having some type of a bigger faith. It also comes into having unbelievable mental discipline. I, I'm a firm believer that you need to force yourself to do things that are uncomfortable every single day. Every person I see that exists and live a life of mediocrity is it, they jumped into what, what people call the coffin of comfort. It's very easy to live an average life mm. and sleep in that coffin of comfort and not experience anything outside of it. But people who live an epic life and they're on fire and everything I aspired and everything I think many people aspire to be was because they ran from comfort. Mm. And what happens is discipline is like a muscle. The more you run from comfort, the more you do things you don't like, that discipline bone gets so strong that then it turns into mental discipline, emotional discipline, spiritual discipline. And those are the people who become strong leaders because when mm. you are leading a company, when you are leading a family, when you are a leader of your friends, they tend to gravitate around the person who has stability, who has internal confidence that feels almost impenetrable. It doesn't mean that you're not human. You can have emotions. There's no doubt about that. I'm not the like David Goggins, screw your emotions kind of guy. You know? <laughs> that's, that's not me. It's real. You feel that. But I, I just... Uh, I think for me, man, it's keeping it, it's just being in complete control internally in every part of life. And then when life throws things at me, it, 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 it's, uh, I just feel prepared. I feel like I can go through anything and that helps you to be more resilient. But the second you go after that comfort, uh, really quickly, you'll slip back into that run from uncomfortable and then you lose that resiliency. And then you don't realize it until 10 years later when you gave up on all of your dreams and you mm -hmm. stopped doing everything that was hard. And then you live a life of regret. And I can live with failure every day of my life, but I cannot live with regret. And so, uh, so I just, I just decide to fail every day, then regret it in ten years. Love that. Oh, that Love. Is good. Love it. <laughs> That's so good. I would say that you make it sound so easy, Justin. Like you make it sound so easy to step out of your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. What would you say to someone? They're like, "Oh, that sounds great. I want to do that." What's the first step? Like, I don't want to take a big step right now, but what's a little step that I can take to maybe get me out of my bubble? Slightly, what would you say to them? Yeah, so a couple of things I've always thought about. Number one, I would say, imagine that you've got a camera in the corner of your room, if you're a Gen Z right now. And that, that camera is your future spouse and your kids watching you. Would they be proud of what you're doing? Mm. Would, they, um, would they see you come up to a challenge and back down because you chose the easier route than the route that was best for your future spouse, your future business, and your future family? Or do they see that you're willing to like kind of grit and do what's uncomfortable because it's going to create an epic life for the future people you love? Uh, I take that very seriously. Like I, I really do. I feel that deeply that uh, life is hard, whether you dodge hard things or you do easy things. And I'd rather do the hard mm. things and live an epic life that's hard than, than do the easy things and still live a life that's hard. It doesn't change. It's just different kind of hearts. And so um, really, I, you know, have that camera and make sure that you're making decisions that you'd be proud of. That if 100 million people saw you on stage doing it, heck yeah, he, that person is living out what they tell the world. They're getting closer to where they need to be. And if it's not, then you shouldn't be doing it. It makes it a little bit easier to put emotions aside. Number two is you got to build an environment of incredible human beings around you. Yeah. I, I just cannot, cannot say it enough. When I was younger, and, and I did have some struggles with my upbringing, but I had three awesome brothers, one blood brother and two cousins, loved them to death. And, and I had lived my uncle parts of my life. So there was some good there for sure. But I remember sitting there and be like, I don't know how to shave. I don't know how to do this, this, and this. And I went on YouTube 
I watched gurus and finance. I watched things on fitness. I probably watched an hour or two hours of YouTube every single day for four years in high school because I didn't have the people to educate me, but I was going to find out the information. And so uh, by having that in my environment, it helped me also eliminate excuses because all that I saw, heard, listened to in the environment I was around uh, forced me to have to level up. But when you're around a lot of mediocrity, people will glorify your mediocrity and they'll make you feel uncomfortable when you're not. But when you're around people who are living a life of excellence, you get so uncomfortable if you're mediocre for one second. So it almost makes it easier. So the environment, what you see and what you hear, have the camera in the corner and live out a life that like either glorifies who you believe in, you know, whatever that God is, or your future family or your kids. And, and if you can just do that, even for a couple months, it gets easier and easier and easier to then it's no longer an option. I remember yeah. one of my coaches used to say, he said, Justin, if you're trying to not eat candy, don't say, oh, I can't eat candy. I'm on a, I'm on a diet. You say, I'm Justin and I don't eat candy. There's no, like, <laughs> it's not like it's an option. That's who I am. Yeah. I don't eat candy. I'm Justin. I work out blank amount of times a week. Like it, it, the the final part, I think, is making sure you understand your identity, and every decision needs to match that identity, and you need to speak that into existence. When you do those yeah. three things, you can't not be excellent. That's yeah. where I tell them to start, and just do it over time. And you're affirming, and you're also affirming what you're in control of, right? So, so I mean, intentionally in your case, but for others that maybe aren't as intentional yet. They take command of their thought life, right? And they have these and these phrases that just affirm what is good. And you're aligning that process and just, just building yourself up that way. You, you said two hours a day while you're at school on, on YouTube, right? It just, just talks about there's so much to learn out there. We have access to it. Just make the time and do the learning, right? So we've got all this information and there's this noise that comes from social media. There's this noise that comes from- Paralyzing. Yeah, there's so much, right? <laughs> How does a parent guide their young child or their young adult maybe to, to have this discipline without having an altercation, right? Or to say, hey, it's okay to be on TikTok and stuff, but if that algorithm is keeping you up till two o'clock in the morning, it's not okay. Make a better decision. How would, with your experience, how would you guide or, or encourage a, a young adult or maybe a, a parent or an educator based on your experience, right? as to how to approach that conversation or encourage the utilization of that in a responsible, intentional way? Yeah, man, another really good question. Um, look, uh, I think I saw something that says every year human beings evolve every year, one year quicker now than every 25 years in the 1900s. Every one year, technology advances 25 years, all of that. So we are in warp speed. There is no doubt about it, which means that if you blink, 10 years have passed by and we live in a completely different world. And so there are people who are like, oh, the internet's going to end the world. Oh, social media is going to end the world. Now we're hearing chat GPT and open AI is going to take over. It's like, look, uh, this is human evolution. The, the, uh, there's going to be a lot of good, a lot of good that comes with chat GPT and open AI and TikTok and all of that. And there is going to be equal, unbelievable bad. Uh, it's not the social media's fault. It is your fault. You have complete control over it. Social media is easily the most important thing that we've used to make millions and millions and millions of dollars. Plain and simple. It's the best thing that's ever happened to our business. But I don't use social media as a consumer. I'm not there to waste time or gossip or do toxic things. I'm using it to amplify what I want to do in my life. And so I hope that parents just understand that first and foremost, they should know their kids. You know, we tend to give someone an iPad and the kids on the iPad for eight hours and whatever. And then you have the opposite of side of family. that's like, we're going to have no technology. You get, and it's a day. And I'm like, you know, what it really just needs to come down to is you need to know your kids, know what matters to them and, and what lights them on fire. If your kid is on fire when he plays basketball, then light that fire and throw gas on it. If mm. they love entrepreneurship, like know your kid, then help your kid understand what are you trying to achieve? You know, if I'm talking to a kid and he's 12 years old, I'm like, you really want to be a professional basketball player, even if it's a video game or whatever. Let's look into this together of what's it going to take for you to get that when you're 18. You're going to mm. have to put in three hours a night. You're going to have to do this, this, and this. Are you open to doing this? If you're open to put in this work ethic, I will support you in that. Like, let's do this. But if you're not, then we need to go another direction. When there's alignment, right, with the mom and dad and with the kid, mm. And the kid feels heard and matters. 
and the mom and dad has made that transparent and clear and then mapped out the road of how to get to that in-game result. And that can vary. Obviously, a 12-year-old kid at 13 can then change his whole entire mind. That's fine. Um, once that's clear, then when you are when you are disciplining your child and you're hoping to give them, you know, kind of like a, whatever those bowling uh, bumpers are, uh, you're telling them, I'm putting these bumpers in place because it keeps you on the path to get to where you said you wanted to be at 18. So either you don't want that anymore, or if you do, this is how we're going to get here. And I feel like kids understand, oh, okay, six hours of TikTok isn't going to get me to be a professional player or to be a yep. firefighter, whatever it is. Okay. And they understand that when you make an action or a decision, it either gets you closer or farther from where you want to be. There is no middle ground. There is no, like you stay in the middle. Yeah. So by doing this, Johnny, you're getting farther away from achieving what you'd wanted. And then it's no longer like the mom and dad are being jerks. It's the mom or dad care and love you so much. And they appreciate it because they understand that they are just trying to help you to get to where you want to be and do things that you love. And man, I think if you just did that, the kid feels heard, understood, has patience. Um, and, and, and then that helps you kind of control what does your kid see, hear, and feel? What are they around? And, and is that parent's uh, role to make sure to protect them? to just make sure they're in the right environments that help propel them towards what that kid loves and loves to do and, and is the best version of themselves. But yeah. uh, it's not easy. I make, I'm making it sound easy. It's just like running a business or any other part of life. It's like being in a marriage. It's work. It's the most beautiful thing in the world, but it's also so challenging. And so you just got to block off the time and, and, and go from there. But that's where I would tell a parent to start. Yeah, and no, no, that's wonderful what you're sharing. And it goes, that alignment thing, we talk about in business, right? Align your vision, goal, strategy to the individual vision, goal, strategy, the alignment. And it's about how we communicate that. And what you're saying is it's, it's communication. It's communicate with your, your, your child, your, your 13-year-old, the young adult, whomever, right? And I mean, I'm 47. I'm communicating with my dad every second day, right? I mean, it, it's so important because we oceans apart from one another, right? And it's vital. And he's still a mentor and he's still a guide. And, and I miss my mom terribly right i'd love to have those conversations and dialogues with her again and that i think is a value that you brought to to this conversation i'm sad that it's 30 minutes already <laughs> i'm thinking my word you're that just that again just your healthy deposits that you're sharing just just love what you're sharing there man sure so many good sure. notes of wisdom and advice justin if people want to connect with you further after this where can they find you on social media yeah. Yeah, uh, great question. So, I mean, I'm on every single platform. Uh, so the name is Justin. Last name is L-E-C-U-Y-E-R, Liquier. So uh, you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, whatever. Really, I eat, sleep, and breathe LinkedIn. Like I told you, that is the platform where I can change lives, do a lot of good. And then the other 1% of my time, I'm on every other platform. Uh, and normally, it's to tell people about the good we can do together. Uh, but th those are the best ways to reach out to me. It's probably LinkedIn, Facebook. My email too is justin.t. My last name, L E C U Y E R, at gmail.com. So email me too if anyone has any other thoughts, questions, ideas. I love brainstorming. So perfect. We'll put those links down below, as well as if you want to subscribe to this podcast so you can hear upcoming future episodes, do that as well. And you can find us on Instagram at greater in East NC. Um, thank you guys so much for listening in and thank you again, Justin, for being an awesome guest, Neville for co-hosting. This has been so much fun, such a great conversation today, and we'll see you guys on the next podcast. Thanks. Bye.